guys thank you so much for your visit to our family we need your support and love please press subscribe button and bell icon it's totally free good luck for your exams now enjoy hey guys welcome back again and i hope you have already watched my two videos day 16 and day 17 and if you are just joining my channel uh, you can check out my videos from day 1 to day 16 and hopefully you will be covering your uh, hundreds of questions of English literature every day I make a video on English literature so today as uh, this is the part third because uh, the poem love song of uh, love song of J Alfred Perfrock by T.S. Eliot is a long poem and uh, it is not possible for me to make a long video longer than uh, 10 or uh, to 15 minutes <clears throat> and to upload the same uh, because of some problems network problems so I make uh, at least 10 uh, 10 minutes video and uh, this is the third part of this poem because this is a long poem so let's go ahead and let's discuss some uh, some questions and answers and uh, the explanation of the poem so stanza one in stanza one if you read the poem uh, if you can download the poem uh, from somewhere you can check out from uh, Google and uh, from any book and you will <clears throat> then you can uh, see the explanation of the poem the speaker invites the listener to walk with him into the streets on the on an evening that resembles a patient here the word patient is uh, important and anesthetized uh, with ether lying on the table of a hospital operating room and the imagery Imagery suggests that the evening is lifeless and listless. So you can take out the notes. Uh, what is the imagery? Uh, imagery and the speaker, the listener, walk through lonely streets after the day has has ended. Past cheap hotels and restaurants with sawdust on the floors that soak up spilled food and drink to make it easier to clean at the end of the night. <clears throat> so. Uh, if you have already gone through my two videos, you will uh, you will uh, understand this video clearly about uh, uh, about what we are talking here. The theme is very clear. Now, next is <clears throat> this shabby surroundings remind the speaker of his own shortcomings. Their images remains remaining in his mind as he walks on. He is totally disappointed, uh, disappointed man. Perfrock then prods the listener to ask the speaker a question about the speaker's life, perhaps why he visits the uh, CD places, uh, which are symbols of his life, and why he has not acted to better himself. Now in Stanja 2, in the room of women come and go, talking to Mark Langelo, uh, this is a very important line in this poem and it is asked in several exams so uh, please uh, lend me your ears at a social gathering now in a room women discuss a great renaissance artist prefrog may wonder how they would possibly be interested in him when they are discussing someone as impressive as michelangelo so as you can uh, you can uh, see here <clears throat> so who is uh, Michelangelo okay uh, they are discussing the great renaissance artist so he was a great renaissance artist symbolism cat it is important the smoky haze spreads across the city the haze is like a quite timid cat padding around rubbing its head on objects uh, licking its tongue and curling up to sleep after allowing suit to fall upon it the speaker resembles this cat as he looks into uh, windows or into the room trying to decide whether to enter and become part of the activity. Eventually, he curls up in the safety and security of his own soft arms alone and separate. What this may mean is that Perfrock feels inferior and is unable to act decisively. He limits himself to con corners as a timid person might do at dance and it stands stagnant be becoming the target of ridicule or judgment the suit the speaker tells himself there is no hurry there will be a time to decide then act then put on the right face to meet people 
he also mentions that there will be time to kill and time to act and even time to do many things there is also mention of the time to think about doing things to dream and then revise those dreams all before sitting down with a woman to take toast and tea this is the speaker's way of postponing and avoiding his fear of failure he says that there will always be time to face it so why face it now so this is very very interesting line you can you can see <clears throat> this is the speaker's way of postponing and avoiding his fear of failure he says that there will be always there will be uh, always time to face it so why to face it now in stanza 5 the repetition of the coming and going of the women in the room suggests that life is repetitive and dull so it is very important uh, what is the significance of uh, women coming and going and this feeling of rejection and loneliness is also repeated prefrox says that there will be time to wonder whether he dares to approach a woman <clears throat> he feels like turning back always after all he has a bald spot thinning hair and thin arms and legs he even doubts the acceptability of his clothing before questioning what people will think of him particularly the women he is so scared of women women he decides to think about it and make a decision then reverse the decision again this is very interesting perfrog realizes that the people here are the same as people he has met many times before the the same uninteresting people in this same uninteresting world they even all sound the same so why should he do anything the speaker is trying to justify his reasoning for backing out and being indecisive the speaker mentions how he has also seen their gazes before many times gazes that form an opinion of him treating him like an insect pinned into a display so uh while listening to this uh, you can say commentary or you can say the explanation of the video, uh, explanation of the stanza by stanza you can write down the themes which are asked you can write down the examples of imagery you can write down the things which are shown in this uh, video like cat you can say uh why he is writing women come coming and going what is michael angelo who that person was so you can uh, collect such questions these questions become very important if you are uh, going for english teacher exams he questions how he will be able to explain himself to them the ordinariness the mediocrity of his life through a continuation of his parallel structure the speaker mentions that he has known women like these before wearing jewelry but really bare lacking substance he wonders why he is even thinking about them and blames it on the smell of perfumes he asks if he will tell a woman that he came through narrow streets where lonely men like himself lean about lean out of windows watching a life go by without taking part in it he mentions that he should have been nothing more than crab claws in the depths of the silent ocean this imagery of a crab may also mean that he is similar to them because he is always moving side to side and never up up or down he may also consider himself a bottom feeder so you can say bottom feeder crab uh third thing cat you have got uh you have uh, imagery images there of a patient okay etherized now in stanza 11 we see that the time passes peacefully as if the afternoon evening is sleeping or wasting time is stretched out on the floor he wonders if he should sit down with someone take a chance to make an acquaintance or simply live he then laments about how he has suffered and even imagine his head being brought in on a platter 
allusion to John to Baptist. Baptist. He even f finds it difficult to compare himself to this character because he is no prophet and uh, has seen many opportunities pass and has seen death up close holding his coat sinecring. In short, he has been afraid of life and death both. He asks if it would have been worth it all along to try to make a connection with one of the women rambling questioning his indecision. He wonders if it would be worth it to act on this urge of belonging and befitting and if he knows that he will only have her criticize and reject him. He thinks of rejection all the time again seeing only the pessimistic worst case scenario <clears throat> he again questions if it would have been worse it to have a woman to experience sunset or after all the morning or evening when the workmen walk the street or discussing novel over tea after hearing the drag of a skirt across the floor or plumping a pillow or throwing off a shawl before being told at the end of the night that he was mistaken about her intentions towards him. Here the speaker compares himself to Hamlet, this is very important, whose tragic flaw is indecisive. He has trouble with the comparison and rather uh, aligns himself with the attendant Lord Planius, who is seen as long-winded fool. Notice the capitalization of fool, which also alludes to court jester or in stanza 14. Here the speaker compares himself to Hamlet, and uh, this is one of the most uh, stanza, most important stanza of this poem uh, for uh, for examination purpose. Okay, and if you want to enjoy the whole poem, that's great. Here the speaker compares himself to Hamlet. Why he compares himself to Hamlet, whose tragic flaw is indecisiveness. He has trouble with this comparison and rather aligns himself with the attendant Lord Planius, who is seen as a long-winded fool. Notice the capitalization of fool, which also alludes to a court jester or Yorick, whose skull Hamlet holds. <clears throat> now from 15 to 19 stanza, uh, here is summary of these lines or explanation. The speaker now realizes that time is passing and he continues to grow old. Like other men going through a midlife crisis, he considers changing his hairstyle and clothing. He also hears the song of the siren like Odysseus in Odyssey but says that not even they would waste the time to sing to them. Okay, people, thank you for watching the video and uh, please do share and hopefully you have liked, uh, liked the video already.